The workout for tonight is going to start with lying hamstring curls. I'll do three sets of those into a belt squat. I'm going to do three sets of that. I'll increase the weight from last week because I went three sets of 10. I don't want to go into 12s. I'm going to stick with my 10. So I'll increase by probably 10 pounds tonight and see where we fall somewhere in the six to 10 range for three sets. Um, I'm going to go into a reverse Nordic um, band assisted to help me with the concentric phase of those. Go into probably two sets of an ATG split squat. So these will still focus on glutes, but um, I get a ton out of my quads on these because we get a really, really deep stretch. And then finish off, I'll leave the, leave the belt squat loaded and we'll finish off with a belt squat donkey calf raise. We'll get those in at the end. Uh, so that's what we're doing tonight. I'll film one set of each and um, then we'll talk about it a little bit at the end. So um, let's go. Okay, uh, strength wise, that first set felt fine. Um, I hit the top of my rep range for what I was going for it, but my hamstrings are sore. So going in, I could film a little bit, but as I got into that, right when I started that set with my working weight, um, I noticed they're still pretty sore. So um, that's from the, the Smith Machine Braced RDLs, I increased that by one set and pushed them really hard in the last workout and got really sore from those. So um, that was pushing my level of recovery, um, what I'm able to recover for and still be able to hit my workouts in the, um, in the intervals that I want to. So what I'm gonna do, I originally planned on doing three sets of um, lying hamstring curls. I'm gonna drop that down to two sets instead for tonight and then let my hamstrings rest. So I should be fully recovered by the time I come into the, the Smith Machine Braced RDLs again next week, coming back around. Um, I'm still gonna shoot for three sets of those again next time and then hopefully I'll be able to do three sets of lying hamstring curls. That'll also probably be my last workout before I take a deload anyway. So. Um, even if I was still sore, uh, feeling the same way that I feel now, when I come around to this next week, I'd still probably do the three sets knowing that I'm going to do a couple of deload workouts and I'm going to reset anyway. But because I'm going to come into next week and I'm going to go really hard and it's going to be the last week of this mesocycle, I'm going to bring it down to two sets and hopefully I recover a little bit faster. So when I'm doing any kind of a lunge or split squat, um, and when I'm talking lunges versus split squats, um, a lunge is typically, at least the way I think of it is, a lunge is very dynamic. So a lunge is like, you're standing, you take a step forward into your lunge and you come all the way back up and bring your feet back together and then back down or, or backwards. But there's that dynamic piece to it where you're actually taking a step and coming back up with every single rep. With a split squat, you assume your position, you get your lunge stance set, you drop down, you come back up, but your feet stay in that staggered position. So um, this is, what I'm doing is an ATG split squat. Um, ATG stands for ass to grass, um, and it's a split squat, but I'm focused on getting absolutely as low as I possibly can, getting my butt all the way down to my heel and letting my knee come as far in front of my toe as I possibly can. Um, but anytime I'm doing, whether it's a lunge or a split squat, my focus is always to push out of my heel um, because 
Uh, I'm focused a little bit more on my glutes on that. Even with this one where I'm hitting a lot of quad, um, I'm still gonna feel it primarily in my glutes. So I'm getting a little bit out of both of those. But um, always I push out of my heel, um, focus more on my heel than my midfoot. It just helps me build that connection to my glutes that I'm trying to get. Um, and I focus on not pushing myself straight up, but pushing, driving back. So with these, I'm not worried about, you know, getting down to that bottom position and coming up real high. I'm focused on pushing and driving kind of back and up and just getting my legs so that it's um, pretty well locked back out to a full range of motion and then coming right back down into it. And then again, like everything else that we do, slow on that, slow on the way down on the eccentric, really focusing on the pause um, down at the bottom and I feel a good stretch in my glutes, I feel a good stretch in my quads. Then driving out of the heel smoothly, coming out of that really deep stretch position, pushing through my heel and feeling my glutes throughout the contraction on the way up. Once you get to the top, no rest there, drop right back into the movement. Again, I don't like resting at the top because um, that's the position where, you're, where you don't have, especially with these, where you don't have tension on the target muscle. I wanna keep tension on the muscle the entire time. And even just for tracking purposes, so when I'm thinking about, okay, last time I did eight reps, I wanna get nine reps. Well, there's a difference between getting eight reps smooth and consistently where every single one's the same and there's absolutely no pause at the top. But if I have to stop at the top on that eighth rep and take an extra couple breaths and then get the ninth rep, that's different, at least from my perspective, than doing nine reps without having to take any kind of a rest. So I guess that's how I like to track my uh, progress from week to week to week. I know that if I'm not having to rest and I'm getting one more rep and the reps and the amount of time that it takes me to do the reps and everything is completely static, then I am improving from week to week instead of getting extra reps because I'm doing essentially a rest pause technique. Resting for three full breaths, doing another rep, resting for five breaths, doing another rep, resting for 10 breaths, resting for 30 seconds. How long are you gonna rest at the top of that movement and still consider it one continuous set? So I want a nice smooth continuous set all the way through and when I know I'm at my target range where I'm not gonna be able to get another rep or another two reps or another three reps without taking um, a bunch of rests in order to get back in. Um, that's what I'm shooting for. So um, I guess just another insight into why I tend to focus on not stopping at the top, but just keeping those reps nice and smooth and consistent. So calf training, um, no, I do not have the biggest calves. Um, I don't have the biggest legs, but I work very, I work really hard at them. Um, I've always wanted to have big legs, big calves. Um, what I have found works the best for calves. Um, number one, so if, and if you're trying to grow yours, number one, train them first. Um, I haven't done that in this mesocycle. Um, I'm gonna leave things alone through next week and then deload and then I'll jump into another mesocycle, switch up my exercises just a little bit. Um, and so we'll talk our way through that when we get there. But um, if you're trying to grow your calves, put them at the beginning of the workout because they're one of the easiest exercises to skip when you're trashed at the end of a workout. Um, abs and calves. Almost everybody puts them last. Uh, for the longest time, I had kind of that feeling that like, oh, if you train your calves early, then they're gonna be shaky and they're gonna be shot and you're not gonna be able to squat. Uh, in actuality and practice, I've never really noticed that. Same thing with your abs. Go and just wipe your abs out and then your core is gonna be shot and you're not gonna be able to do your movements. Um, I suppose if I was trying to train for, um, 
you know, if I had an absolute max day, then yes, probably not. But really in practice for what I'm doing, for what you guys are doing, if you're watching me, we're, just, we're trying to um, build muscle, be healthy, it really isn't gonna matter. So if you're trying to um, improve your abs, put them first, put them early, prioritize them just like you would any other muscle. Same thing with your calves, put them early, prioritize them and then train them just like you would anything else. Progressive overload, um, gradually increase the volume until you find that sweet spot where you're getting a good amount of soreness but then you're recovered on the day that you're supposed to go again. Um, higher reps, I have found works better for me, for calves. So 15 is kind of like my low limit, but even 20, 25, um, potentially even 30 reps. So higher reps, and I definitely focus on the deep, deep stretch on the bottom. Um, I hold that stretch for at least a second, if not two or three seconds down on the bottom, and I really, really get a good stretch out of that. And then I don't worry about getting all the way up onto my toes and then really getting a good, strong contraction at the top, which is kind of how I was always taught to train. But um, as we learn more and more about uh, that bottom two thirds of the movement, that stretch position being so much better for growth, getting all the way up onto your toes, that top third of the movement is not nearly as important for growing the muscle as the bottom two thirds is. And I find that when I'm trying to get all the way up onto my toes and then squeeze at the top of it, again, I'm wasting energy on the part of the movement that has the least stimulus for growth. So I really focus on the stretch at the bottom, slow on the way down, and then I come up to where my heels are just past where I would have a flat foot, maybe just a little bit above that and then back down. And then on my last rep, I always hold that down at the bottom for three, four, five seconds, maybe even longer, really until I start to notice my shoes are starting to slip off the platform, huge stretch in the bottom, massive burn, and then I call it good. And then very short rests in between sets and kind of jump right back into it. So if you're trying to grow your calves, put them early, um, maybe try higher reps, really good stretch on the bottom, and then focus on the lower two thirds of the movement instead of an actual true full range of motion and none of the getting up to the top and flexing the muscle at the top. Instead of focusing on that top part and flexing at the top and really trying to flex your calves, get down to the bottom and just really dig into the stretch.